Biotechnica. Welcome to another video. Suppose if you are someone who are looking for a PhD abroad, whether it is in the US, UK, Germany, France, Italy or wherever it is, I'm going to talk about the top 10 things that you know before applying for any PhD abroad in any part of the world. So today I'm going to talk about everything in detail. So make sure when you're starting your preparation of your application process, to any of the university uh, in UK or US, then definitely this is going to help you. So let's talk about all the topic in detail. So first one, research well prior. What does it mean? So I'm going to tell you when you're going to start your PhD application process in any part of the world. First important thing is you need to know when is going to be the application process going to start in a specific university? Suppose let's take it as an example, you want to apply for US. So you need to know when is going to be the summer openings, when it's going to be the spring opening, when it's going to be the winter opening. This might be variable according to the university. So I'm telling commonly summer opening, spring opening, as well as winter openings will be there. And always mark up the calendar. This is the most important thing I'm telling you because when you start your, uh, applying for any of the PhD abroad, first you need to have a personalized note. I'm telling it because you have to mark when is the application deadline for every university going to be for a PhD project. Suppose if I have to talk about PhD project, sometimes the PI would be giving a notification that there is an availability of the project with the funding. Then you need to know what is going to be the deadline and what email they are asking to mail. So everything you have to write it and mark it up in the calendar when's going to be the last date. And always I'm suggesting you, if you want to know more about the university, suppose you would like to go to Germany, you need to know what are the universities are very specialized in the area of your interest. Suppose if you are interested in oncology, then you need to know what are the university you can go for. You can go for DKFZ, HBIGS. So these are some of the institutes which are reputed for oncology research. So go to the um, university fairs that will be available most of the time you have to go and get a knowledge what are the uh, university has a less fee uh, what is going to be the fellowship what are the scholarship that are available when you're going to attend a lot of fairs you will understand a lot of thing and you will have immense knowledge about the university and when you're going to start apply uh, the application becomes very easier because you understand what exactly is going to be and always create an exclusive PhD note. Yes, this I'm telling you because uh, suppose if you have applied to one of the PI in Singapore, let's take it this way. And during the interview process and after the interview process, there might be some sort of trauma within yourself and you might have got a rejection from the PI. So what you should understand is when he's mailing you, you need to write down the feedback from the PI and always take that feedback and make it positive when you're attending the next interview. So pen down all the feedback that you're going to take it from the PI or the investigator, whoever you're attending the interview. And the next important thing is always write down the name of the university, the project and the PhD and what's going to be the deadline. If scholarship is available, what's going to be the deadline and how much is the tuition fee for a PhD candidate? How much is the fellowship stipend, everything? If you're going to personalize it, you will never miss the time. So you can have your personalized note or you can have a note in your phone or you can have any kind of calendar where you can note down everything. So this is the most important thing when you're going to start your preparation of uh, applying abroad this has to be taken into consideration the next important thing is pick up the research group yes this is most important thing because it's going to be a long duration of time four to five years you might be doing if it's most predominantly you will have within three to four years abroad so you want to go for interdisciplinary research or proposed project of your interest. Sometimes there might be scholarship which would ask for your proposal or you would like to go to a specific person and work under him only because you might be following that person for so long. If that's the case, what type of research in interest you have, whether you want to go for interdisciplinary research or you want to go for translational research what type of research you want to go, which person you, you want to work under. This you need to know and observe the research work. When you're going to go in for any sort of research work, you need to know what is the research work that they are actually doing. Suppose if you're new to uh, start applying for your PhD, uh, there might be one scenario where you might have felt this uh, project is kind of interesting to you. So that time you look around the projects that are available in the university, in the country of your interest and analyze the laboratory website. That's the most important thing when you're going to understand their research it's always important you read the article whatever they're going to write as well as read the papers of the team members 
any one paper you don't have to read the complete research paper which might take a lot of time you just have to read the summary of the uh, project or the abstract of the project in a paper so that you'll have a clear idea yes this is what the lab exactly executes and always have if you really wanted to go into that lab only always have a track of the lab website what the PI is doing, what is the present update that they have done, what are the current findings that they have done in the lab, what publication recently they have done. And if the PI is going to have any sort of uh, openings right now, uh, he might be posting there is a position available for a PhD candidate in this project. And if he has given some funding opportunity, then look for the eligibility criteria that he is talking about. And if your eligibility criteria matches, personally mail the researcher and you can talk to the person and attend the interview. So the second important thing is pick up the research group very smartly analyzing and wisely because this is what going to decide your entire PhD program. The next one. When you're going to start applying, okay, suppose if you have applied for a person, usually PhD application goes through the interview and you will be redirected to the university only. You have to apply to the university, then only the PI can help you. So it's not like postdoc that you directly go to the person and the person will forward it to the university. So you have to apply to the university. So they will definitely going to ask, even if you clear your interview um, that the PI conducts, if you're not going to have the language uh, test requirements by the university then definitely they're not going to take you so write the te test whichever is required from each of the university GRE suppose just check in for some of the university will ask for GRE most of the universities for PhD nowadays are not asking some of the university ask for GRE subjects also and of course you need to have TOEFL and IELTS it's always good for an Indian student to have either a TOEFL or IELTS because definitely it's one of the eligibility criteria or entry requirement for most of the university in US or UK or Germany wherever you go you always have this one and always schedule the test in advance you can write the GRE test or TOEFL test or IELTS any month because it's all around the year. Any month you can start applying, go to the portal and start applying. But make sure if the application deadline is on September, please don't write it um, on the September month or only during August. You can plan it accordingly like two months before you can write the exam, which means you have to prepare some five months before itself files or TOEFLs or for G GRE itself. So you should always make sure that it doesn't crashes your application deadline. So always schedule a test in advance and start studying for the test also. And the next important thing is collect the reference letter. This is most important because most of the PI or the university doesn't know about you. So they want to know more about you. So collect all the reference letter or recommendation letter from the academic experts, wherever you have, wherever you have studied, collect all the reference letter, mentioning that how you are suitable for the university as well as for the scholarship if you're going to apply. So inform to the referees that you have applied for the university and they'll be getting a link and they have to click onto the link and they have to submit the reference letter and always check with them sometimes they used to forget always check with them whether they have sent the uh, le letter of recommendation to the university or in the scholarship portal before the deadline if they are submitting it later it's of no use so always you get a track of whether they have submitting it or not sometimes when they submit you will get notified in some of the university you will not get notified so it's better always to check with the reference you're getting it from the university professor or the scientist where you have worked under so collect the reference letter the most important thing is always pen down or look for scholarship suppose if you're wanting to work in a specific university UK you want to go for apply for Gates Cambridge scholarship apply for a road scholarship apply for many many scholarships which are available so start looking for the scholarship what are the grants that are available fellowship at the initial itself and PhD sometimes in cases PI will advertise that the project is available with the funding in such situation you don't have to look for scholarship if directly applying to the university then you need a scholarship to apply for the project suppose if the PI is advertising with a fellowship you don't have to look for a project a scholarship especially so PhD is advised as a funded one then there is no need to apply for fund but if you're feeling that uh, sometimes at any point of time that your fundings will be rejected then it's of course you have your own scholarship and check your eligibility before applying for any grant or for any fellowship or your grant and if you have any more doubts it's okay you can inquire with the admission office number which will always be in all the website of scholarship or in the university website so they will definitely respond you back again okay the next important thing is 
no research site of scholarship this is the most important th thing uh, what are the phd uh, projects are available in different laboratories so you need to personalize yourself because you cannot go to every website and check what are the scholarship available or uh, what are the project of your interest that's going to be very tedious process for you so what you can do is sign up for the newsletters like if you have a portal that talks about all the scholarships for phd and the project of your interest oncology for projects is available or stem cell research project is available translation research project whatever it is you just sign up for that so that you'll be notified like biotechnica usually has a uh, portal where it talks about the scholarship fellowship so you can subscribe to that so that you'll be personalized uh, getting the message in your inbox so whatever is available whatever the research sites of scholarships or fellowships or application portal is going to come always subscribe to it or sign up to this so that you'll get a personalized mail to that one if you feel that is loaded with too much of mail have a separate mail for it and receive a personalized message in your inbox so that you don't have to go and search anywhere else you'll have all the scholarship in one site so that you can start applying for it and the next important thing is essay or essay or sop let's talk about rejection rejection can become acceptance one day yes sometimes what exactly happen is when you start applying for scholarship when you uh, start applying for the university you would not get a response at time even the university doesn't respond you the pi doesn't respond you so what exactly happen is you will feel like there is nothing no response is coming so what you should understand is continuous learning process right from its application stage you need to learn one thing is when you start applying itself you are in the process of learning how things is going to happen because it's going to be a very learn learning process you can support another person who is literally doing it so rejection can be become acceptance one day make sure because keep up the fire within yourself because one day if you are going to apply 25 application form might be one will be accepted or two will be accepted so not all the rejection is going to determine your capability it's going to be a learning process for you so rejection will become definitely an acceptance one day and very be professional in your write ups whatever you're going to write it in the university websites or scholarship when you're going to write an essay or sop or whatever it is be professional in it and sometimes you will not get a reply from the university or from the pi or anybody else so what does it in indicates a no reply if they are not going to reply it's indicating that you've been rejected it's a polite rejection so if you really feel so that you want to get that position then send a reminder to them that your application has not been processed i do not know the update about it you can get it no so pro it's a polite rejection and always think you are worth it no doesn't mean like that's all your life is going to be that's way so you're worth it that's the most important thing whenever any rejections or polite rejection is going to take place upgrade yourself this is the most important thing because you cannot get succeed in all the application process sometimes it would be rejected but during that process of time most of the university used to tell you that why it is rejected they would be giving a reason because you didn't meet the eligibility of this one or it's not updated or something else you can actually improve on that when you're going to apply for the next one so you are worth it and no reply doesn't mean that you're going to fail you are worth it the next important thing essay or sop sometimes we can see people who have got low cgp but they would have written a wonderful sop or a beautiful essay in the scholarship page they would have definitely got a fellowship or scholarship which doesn't mean that i can say that low cgp is enough you need to have a good cgp along if you're going to write a very good statement of purpose why you want to join the university why you want to join the research group why you want to join the scholarship everything when you're going to apply to the pi always remember you send your sop also why you want to join the laboratory and always talk that what interest you have in the laboratory and always when you're going to write any sop or essay be true and be clear in what you want to do it and be precise in the goal that you're talking about list out all the experience suppose if you are going for a crispr cas laboratory then write what are the things that you have learned list out all the experiments that you have experiences what are the research projects you have done where you have done your internship under which scientists you worked under whatever it is you can write it and always make sure your sop or usually an essay maximum two page sop can be one page itself and sometimes in some university you can see they won't give you ask you to write a question answer uh, essay or sop sometimes they'll give you one question and you have to respond to that uh, question so in 
such situation write the answer very crisp so that it literally uh, makes them to be impressed to take you so these are some of the top 10 things that you need to know before applying for a phd research well so know the sites wherever the scholarship updates will be coming to your inbox and pick up the research groups wisely, write the test whichever is required, collect all the reference letter from the person before the deadline and pen down all the scholarship and uh, be professional in your write-ups when you're writing an essay or SOP. Sometimes a no can tell you that a polite rejection, uh, so no reply and you are worth it and rejection can become one day acceptance. So this is the most important thing. So do not think that you've been rejected many times. One time a rejection can become an acceptance from any of the university. So keep trying and you are definitely going to get it and it's definitely going to be a learning process for you and you're going to learn many things. So this is the 10 important things that you have to do before applying for PhD abroad. I believe that this video is helpful for all of you. Thank you so much for joining and I'm going to meet you back again with another useful video for all of you. Thank you.